Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer and welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling, the channel dedicated to wrestling video games fueled by my love, passion, and obsession for them. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I am playing WWF WrestleMania 2000 on the N64, part of the series of wrestling video games developed by Aki, my favorite series of wrestling games. And I'm bringing you yet another WrestleMania 2000 call. The original one roster is all filled up and we're going to complete it with Jake the Snake Roberts. He wasn't with WWF at the time WrestleMania 2000 came out. But people were still talking about Jake the Snake Roberts, and we'll get into that. We'll get into what was going on with Jake the Snake Roberts around the time of 1999. And even today, profile music, moves, fighting style, all that stuff you can find in the description below, typed up in a nice Google spreadsheet. I have a link for that. So make sure you check the description, not only for the link to the full call, but also the link to my Twitch channel where you can see me play games like WrestleMania 2000 and other wrestling games three days out of the week on twitch.tv slash BeBetterGamer. So here we go, we're starting out with the call, body size, three, skin tone, I went with the second one, which is number one. Ring attire, we're just doing the plain tights right here. Ring attire number 30, and actually I like putting it to light green for the color. You can put it regular green if you want, but I like the way the light green looks. It looks a little bit better in my opinion. Head, I went with head size 4. Face, we went with face 10. Hair 1, I went with face, I mean face, I went with hair 5. You could also give them the long hair if you want, but I think the medium hair works well here. Hair 2 for is the short hair, so number 38. And then facial hair, the only mustache in the game number eight wf no mercy has better mustache options wristband one number two which is white uh basic you see that in almost every call everyone wore wrist tape and then feet which makes the call number 28 default colors the snakeskin boots i mean if we didn't have those boots in the game we wouldn't be able to make jake the snake period ring attire two now here i went with the green as well uh this is actually delos tights number 42 15 and 6. You saw before I had it on the dark yellow. I actually changed it in the regular yellow on this one. I think it looks a little bit better. So that's like for when he wore his green tights with the snake pattern around it. That's kind of what I was going for. Same thing here with ring, uh, changing the color over to black 1 and 5. You know, he also wore black tights that had like flames on it. So you can change the colors to red or yellow if you want. I kept it green again to go with the black tights he wore that had the snake pattern on it. This is modeled after his WrestleMania 8 appearance where he fought The Undertaker, where he wore white tights with blue. I didn't really see him wear the white tights all too much, so I always liked that outfit from WrestleMania 8. And real quick note before we get into the match, I want to talk about the DDT. It's a strong grapple for my Jake the Snake call. You can give it to him as his finisher, obviously, innovator of the DDT, Jake the Snake. But I gave him the flowing DDT, which was the DDT that Raven used in WCW NW Revenge. Jake the Snake never kicked anyone into the DDT, as far as I'm aware of. He always just did the DDT. But I love the flowing DDT animation in the Aki games. I also love that he sits up slowly. You know, that's what Raven used to do when he would DDT someone. He would sit up slowly. But that's what Jake the Snake would do all the time. Every time he DDT'd someone, he'd sit up so slowly. It was, it was the coolest thing, you know? <laughs> Back when the DDT was a finisher. Can you believe it? We've come so far. But that's going to be it for the full appearance remember to check the description below for the rest of the move set and all the parameters it's not the perfect way to make jake the snake it's just how i made jake the snake so i would love to hear if you made any changes or alterations to sort of fit your own personal style that's really what the making calls is all about making calls that are a reflection of your own creative freedom in terms of making wrestlers or non-wrestlers in these games we're gonna jump into a match with stone cold steve austin to show off a rest of the the rest of the call with the move set recreating the infamous king of the ring finals where stone cold steve austin austin 316 was born and jake roberts's last run in wwf 
Um, he came back to WWF very different sort of from when he had his first run in WWF, which is the run that I grew up on. I grew up on early 90s Jake the Snake when he would used to come in with Damien the Snake. And he had an amazing run. And looking back on it, what's crazy about Jake the Snake in early WWF, you know, because as a kid, I remember his feuds with almost everyone. He feuded with Andre. He feuded with Macho Man. He feuded with Rick the Model Martel, uh, Ted DiBiase, Rick Rude, Ultimate Warrior, Undertaker. He had so many notable feuds. Did you know that Jake the Snake never held a championship in WWF? He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2014. Might be one of the only few people who were inducted into the Hall of Fame not only the WWF Hall of Fame, but any Hall of Fame and never really held a major championship. But honestly, it was hard to become a major champion in WWF at the time because it was the era of Hogan. Now there was apparently a feud set between Hulk Hogan and Jake Roberts that was supposed to happen at the end of 1986, early 1987. And Jake the Snake, he used to have something called the Snake Pit, which is sort of like the Piper's Pit where he would interview other wrestlers and then you know, if he didn't like them, he would beat them up or he would let them go on their way. And Hogan made a couple appearances on the Snake Pit and allegedly, apparently, and I say apparently because we don't have footage of it, Jake the Snake one time had Hogan on the Snake Pit and gave him a DDT. Now, that was supposed to start their feud. They had a few matches after that where they actually referenced Jake the Snake attacking Hogan at the Snake Pit. But this segment was never aired in its full entirety, maybe. Maybe the actual segment was, but we never got to see the DDT that Jake the Snake delivered to Hulk Hogan. And the reason being is because after Jake the Snake did the DDT, the audience watching the segment started cheering for Jake the Snake and chanting DDT. Because again, at this time, the DDT was super over. He innovated the DDT by accident. It was a botched move, believe it or not. He was trying to go for something else, ended up falling back, planking the guy in the, he in, in the head, and then the crowd was like, <gasps> you know, you just spiked the guy in the head, you just killed him. And Jake the Snake was like, oh, I got something here. So the move was super over. And then also, I mean, he would come out with this giant snake. He was originally a heel, but he would turn babyface in WWF pretty early on, shortly after this Hogan incident. And we never got that major heel run of Jake the Snake going against Hulk Hogan. Jake the Snake commented on it many years later, talking about how the fan support caused him from uh, not making the most money he could have ever possibly made because that would have meant main event matches against Hulk Hogan and headlining pay-per-views. But he still became an iconic figure in WWF with his other notable feuds, heel or babyface. You know, if you remember Jake the Snake, you probably remember a lot of the times when he interacted with other wrestlers. You remember Andre the Giant being scared of Damien. You remember the Snake biting Macho Man and, and Jake the Snake interfering in Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth's wedding, the blindfold match between him and the Rick the Model Martel. And of course, if you watch WWE, there it is, the even flow DDT on Jake the Snake. We're going to reverse history right now, beating Stone Cold Steve Austin with the, oh my goodness, he kicked out. Of course, Austin would kick out of the DDT. <laughs> and again, going back to the DDT, this move was so well protected for a very long time. It was an instant KO. When I was going back and doing research, that WrestleMania 8 match that I re referenced with The Undertaker, Undertaker actually gets up from the DDT twice, which at that point, I had never seen anyone kick out of the DDT. Now you can do a you know, super DDT from the top of the Titan Tron and people will still kick out. But hey, wrestling changes, you know, change is good sometimes. <laughs> or is it? I don't know. Let me know. Should the DDT still be protected? I mean, you are putting them on, you know, dropping them on their head. It's a very divisive subject. It's like the super kick, you know, the super kick now is like a transition move. Everyone does the super kick. Same thing with the DDT. But that's what made Jake the Snake unique, man. He was a very simple wrestler he's very simplistic with the way he cut promos the way he wrestled in the ring even my move set in this game reflects that there's nothing flashy about what he does he doesn't he doesn't do any dives he doesn't do any big moves the biggest power move he has was like a short arm clothesline 
but his psychology was second to none. No one could match his in-ring psychology. No one could match his intensity of his promos in an age where everyone was so over the top and screaming and yelling about how they're going to beat this person up and, you know, all oh, the hookamaniacs and this and that. Jake the Snake had this very cool and calm, collected way in which he spoke to you, to the audience, about his opponents. And it drew you in. It made you want to listen. And that it's such a it's, it's his promos still hand, stand up to this day. And of course, you can't speak about promos without speaking about the infamous Austin 316 promo, which again was going off of Jake the Snake's new character in WWE, where he was sort of this born again. Jake the Snake had a lot of issues personally, a lot of demons that have been well documented. They've been well documented in the Behind the Mat documentary, which I highly recommend watching even to this day. A uh, very influential wrestling documentary that came out in 1999. And the resurrection of Jake the Snake Roberts, which is something that has been in the store in the news recent, like a few years back, about Jake the Snake recovering from his battles with addiction, with drug addiction and alcoholism, and getting into shape with the help of DDP, who saw Jake the Snake as a mentor early on in his career. I saw the resurrection of Jake the Snake on Netflix a couple of years back. It was absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend you watch that as well. Highly recommend you watch some old Jake the Snake stuff. His matches with Macho Man. His feuds in the early WWF. You can find all that stuff on the network. Check out the documentaries to see the journey that Jake the Snake had with his uh, addictions and struggles with alcoholism and drug abuse and you know it's something that I think looking at where he is now and how healthy he is now it just goes to show that you can always turn it around as long as you have a good support system in place and as long as you believe in yourself that you can make things better but that's gonna be it for this call let me know what you think about Jake the Snake Roberts in WrestleMania 2000 maybe some of your favorite Jake the Snake moments check out my other let's plays and calls for the Aki series of wrestling games make sure you follow me on Twitch if you want to see me play some more wrestling games and until then until next time you know what to do keep watching all the wrestling thanks for watching